For the past 30 years, the Kia Sportage has been part of Kia's North American lineup. And in that time frame, the Sportage has grown to become one of the company's best-selling models with Kia moving nearly 100,000 units every year. Now, the previous generation was a fairly decent offering. However, in a world full of space-hungry American buyers, it was deemed a little bit too small for the American market. Now, for 2023, Kia is changing all of that with the all-new fifth-generation Sportage. It's significantly larger on the outside because it's built on the, their latest N3 platform. It's available for the first time in hybrid and plug-in hybrid forms and as you can see from the exterior design it's certainly very funky it's going to stand out in the sea of compact family crossovers so today kia has actually flown me out to palm springs california where we're going to spend some time in the gas model and of course this hybrid version and the big question i want answered if you guys have been looking for a new family crossover where is the all-new kia sportage stack up stay tuned to find out So before we start talking about the exterior styling, I wanna first show you guys what's powering uh, the vehicle underneath the hood. Now, Kia is actually gonna offer for the first time three different powertrains, starting at the base end with base engine, which is a gas 2.5 liter engine that makes 187 horsepower. That is the motor that I suspect most of you are gonna buy. Kia says about 25% of buyers are probably gonna choose this option. This is the same hybrid powertrain that we've seen in the Tucson hybrid. It's a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder that is paired with a 44.2 kilowatt electric motor uh, that also is available in either front or all-wheel drive. It pairs up with a six-speed automatic transmission. The Gas 2.5 uses an eight-speed auto. This uses a conventional six-speed auto. It makes pretty good power, 227 horsepower combined and 258 pound-feet of torque. Uh, those numbers are fairly impressive. It isn't quite as powerful as the previous generation Sportage, which offered a two liter turbo. And then if you guys do want more power, the plug-in hybrid essentially has this powertrain, but it offers up to 261 horsepower. That's the same powertrain that I've tested in other cars like the Kia Sorento uh, plug-in hybrid. Now, in terms of fuel economy, this is the reason why you're gonna buy the hybrid model. The regular Sportage is rated at 23, 28, which is fine for the segment, a little bit down. This model, however, is rated at 38 in the city and 38 on the highway, which is pretty good. It's just below the class leader, which is the Toyota RAV4 and Ford Escape hybrid. Uh, the difference between the Sportage Hybrid and the Hyundai Tucson Hybrid, however, is the fact that Kia does offer front-wheel drive on this vehicle. Uh, you can also add all-wheel drive on the hybrid for about $2,000 extra. Um, Zero to 60 performance, Kia didn't say, but we have our testing equipment, we're gonna test that out. And in terms of towing capacity, this vehicle will still tow a maximum of 2,000 pounds, 2,500 if you guys go for the gas only version. And because this new Sportage is a lot larger, this does weigh a little bit more. This one here as it sits is right around 3,900 pounds. But let's go ahead and close up the hood, which is held up with a prop rod, as you can see and show you guys the rest of the styling of this vehicle. Now, as you can see, this has a really interesting paint color. They call it shadow gray matte. It's actually a matte finish color, which technically means it's gonna require extra maintenance, but it does look good. But remember, you can't take this vehicle through an automatic car wash because you're gonna scratch the hell out of the paint. But you can see at the front fascia, how could you not notice the very otherworldly styling? Kia calls it Opposites United, which you could definitely tell it looks very different versus the previous generation. The large, massive tiger nose grill, as you can see at the front, dominates everything. Kia has been going a lot bolder and a lot larger with their grills. You can see there's some different different textures with the piano black, the silver trim, the Kia logo, which is their newer, lo newer logo. It really fits nicely in with the front fascia. And then you can see the headlights of this car. Very interesting design to the headlights. You can see it's got a boomerang shape for the LED daytime running light, an LED turn signal. This upper SX uh, prestige trim has projector style LED low and high beams. And then you also have fog lights there at the lower front fascia. Let me know what you guys think of the styling in the comment section below. I actually thought that the previous generation also looked a little bit funky. So this new one kind of goes along with that theme, but I almost kind of wish that Kia gave this car like a baby Telluride look to it or like a larger Seltos look to it because I think those vehicles do look a little bit uh, better. Now looking at the side profile, you can see this is now built on the N3 platform, which means it's much larger, it's stiffer, it's a lot safer now. Uh, Kia says they've stretched the overall length by over seven inches. So we have an overall length of 183.5. Its wheelbase is about three and a half inches longer at 108.5. This is about the same size as the Tucson. Although if you look at the numbers, this is technically an inch larger, which is why Kia says they gave this best in class interior space, which is something that uh, American buyers are really, really gonna like. Now looking at the wheels, you can see this SX Prestige model has an 18 inch kind of dark gray finish wheel. They're riding on 235 60 series tires. 
Uh, if you guys go for the X-Line model, it'll upgrade up to a 19-inch wheel. There's also an X-Pro model, which we'll drive later on, that has an all-terrain tire. It's kind of a segment exclusive. And then this one here being an all-wheel drive version, Kia has increased the ground clearance significantly by two inches versus the previous generation. So now all the all-wheel drive Sportages will have up to 8.3 inches of ground clearance, which is just right around the class leader for ground clearance. If you guys go for a front-wheel drive model, it'll drop the ground clearance down to 7.1, which is still pretty good, but much better versus like the 6.6 that you had in the previous generation. You can see the side mirrors have an integrated turn signal with a camera there for the blind view camera. There's also really nice uh, low flush roof rails. And then there's a panoramic sunroof on this model. Uh, and overall the silhouette, I would have kind of preferred if Kia went with a more boxier design, but again, it kind of looks different. There's also this interesting trim piece here on the D pillar, which is supposed to go with their whole opposites United uh, design philosophy. And then if you follow me over to the rear of the vehicle, you can see the taillights have a, a certainly an interesting look to them. You've got the new Kia logo here with some of the new script there for the Sportage. You can see the taillights are full LED design, which I really appreciate. There's kind of a black bar here that connects the two taillight modules together. And the only way you're going to tell this is a hybrid is if you look at the badge right here. It says HEV. There'll also be a plug-in hybrid model, which will say PHEV. This is really the only way you can tell. The rear bumper you can see also has a little bit more of a sportier look, almost like a skid plate look. There's no visible exhaust tips. Uh, but overall, let me know what you think about the styling. I think the car actually looks better from the rear. The front just has a little bit too much of a strange, quirky look to it for me. Now, looking at the cargo area, because this car is so much bigger, Kia says that they were able to expand the cargo capacity significantly. So they're saying best in class, you have 39.8 inches or, or cubic feet of space back here, which is pretty good. It's about the same as the Hyundai Tucson. Uh, there's also two different levels where you can put this floor here. This floor, you can see you can put it, put it up and down. This is on the lower level. You can see there's a spare tire underneath there. Um, um, Kia says you obviously you get more space when it's on the lower level and then if you'd like you can also fold down these seats by just pulling on this lever over here which you can do from the back which I appreciate you pull that down you fold down those seats it expands it out to just over 74 cubic feet of space which is definitely more about five cubic feet more versus what you're going to get in something like the Toyota RAV4 or the Honda CRV. So now let's move on to the interior of the all new fifth generation Sportage. Before we do that, however, I wanna show you guys the key fob. As you guys know, this is the new key fob that they first introduced on the Stinger. Kia, it looks like they've also added the auto smart park feature where you can move the vehicle forward and back, and you can also remote start it on the fob. So if you wanna do that, you basically push the lock button, push and hold the start button here, that will turn the vehicle on. And then if I push and hold this button, you have to be standing by the car, and then you can see it's putting itself into gear and the car will move forward on its own with the fob. As soon as you release it, it'll release it, it'll stop. And then if I want, I can actually bring the car back and you can hear the reverse chime noise because this is the hybrid model to let people, pedestrians know that the car is moving forward and back. So again, really cool feature to find, especially in this segment um, that you really only find on the Sportage. Now, as I approach the vehicle here, you can see to unlock the door, there's a button on the outside of the door handle. And you can see the interior of my particular tester has this beautiful red. This is very, very German in the way this color is specked out, especially with the matte gray paint, the red leather interior. This is very unique in the segment. And with that 8.3 inches of ground clearance, it gives you a really easy step in height. You can see the door panel has a soft touch injection molded plastic material. There's an aluminum look for the door handle. Window controls, automatic one touch. For just the front, the rear is not one touch. So I kind of wish the Kia had done that. Uh, you do have a padded armrest over here. And then the seats you can see are a 10 way power adjustment for the seats. They are heated and ventilated. That's what you get on the prestige trim for an extra $2,000 are the heated and ventilated seats. You actually have a two way or an eight way power driver's seat or 10 way with a lumbar. And then you also have an eight way on the passenger side. So usually in this class, they kind of jip you on the passenger side and only give you a four-way. I'm glad to see that Kia gives you an eight-way even on the passenger side. Now, as I get into the vehicle, uh, you can see the car has a pretty familiar look if you guys have been in other Kia products. As I get in and shut the door, the car has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is built off of the N3 platform, which is sh it's shared with the new Tucson. Now, getting inside and putting, starting the vehicle up, you can see the start and stop button is right here. Uh, by the shifter with this electronic shifter that's unique on the hybrid version. And then uh, my tester, because it's an SX Prestige, although it's included if you guys go for the SX trims and up, it has the full curved, almost 25 inch display here, which is kind of facing the driver. The 12.2 inch display here is actually standard on every trim. And then on the lower trims, you'll have an eight inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You don't get the wireless function, however, when you go to the 12 inch. So if you guys go for an EX and up trim, you'll get the 12.3 inch display. Kia says, however, you have to go to the SX to get the curved display. So I'm not entirely sure what this looks like. If it's not the curved display, it may just have a divider here that kind of gives it a less seamless look. 
But overall, I love the way this looks. It's very premium, it's very modern, it's very Mercedes, especially when you kind of combine everything with the nice materials. I love the steering wheel on this car. You can see it's a three-spoke design. It has paddles on the wheel, lots of good high-quality buttons, high-quality leather material. The horn sounds pretty typical, something this size, and I love the way these gauges look, but you can change the way they look based on the drive mode. There's four different drive modes, Eco, Sport, Smart, and Snow. Uh, you can't actually customize the drive mode. There's no individual, but I like how the gauge display changes. Uh, and then you also have pretty nice materials. You can see the dash has a soft touch injection molded plastic with a faux stitching. It's soft touch even on the upper portion. Uh, you have this kind of aluminum look trim or carbon fiber aluminum look trim on the lower portion. You have these interesting looking dash fence on the side of the vehicle with more piano black plastic trim. Uh, and then you also get the Harman Kardon premium stereo with, I believe, nine speakers. It sounds pretty decent considering the class. Uh, and over here, you can see on this portion, this is the same touch sensitive panel that they put on the EV6, where if I push this, it'll go to climate. It gives you two knobs for the dual zone climate control. Push the other button, it goes back to audio and your nav display. So it's kind of cool. It's a little annoying to use at first, but once you get used to it, you kind of just have to remember you have to switch back and forth between the two. And there's your volume knob if you go back to uh, the uh, audio controls using that button over here. Now over here, you can see there's a wireless phone charging pad. Uh, there's two USB charging ports, a USB-A and a USB-C. Keep in mind, you have to use a USB-A to plug the car in, um, which is interesting because again, this doesn't have a wireless Apple CarPlay, which is a little bit uh, frustrating. Now, over here, you can see more piano black plastic. You have your heated and ventilated seat controls, heated steering wheel with just one level. Uh, the cooled seat actually works pretty well. Down here, you can see this is your transmission selector. It's unique to the hybrid. The gas models have a traditional stock or a traditional handle. Uh, Twisted over to the left, it'll go into reverse. You can see full 360 camera that you get with the prestige trim. Love the three different views as well the full top down view there's three different views here and then you can also do a complete full 360 perimeter scan the graphics are fantastic this is basically as good as another you know luxury european brand that i tested although i do wish that the car was color matched to the actual in the actual screen but that's kind of a little bit of a nitpick there you can see there's with the car play it works fairly well there's the kia system here there's the navigation display it works fairly well nothing super special but this is a huge upgrade from the previous generation you can see there's also a hybrid specific mode that shows you your energy flow you can also do a split screen if you like this is a bigger screen setup versus what you get in the two Tucson, which is this car's uh, sister car. Uh, now down over, here, down over here, you can see there's a lock button for the all wheel drive system that'll basically lock it in a 50-50 torque split. There's a downhill assist control. Uh, there's also your drive mode selector, which I mentioned. And then there's a camera button here where you can activate the automatic parallel parking assist uh, and also activate the camera. Uh, down here, you can see the cup holders have the unique feature where you can kind of adjust the size of the cup holders by pushing this button. You can put something like a, an iPad over here, nice padded armrest over here as well. And then you can see Pretty deep center console storage. Um, this is also very comfortable. The seats also have a really premium look to them. Uh, I like how they're you know, wide so you can accommodate wider frames, but they also have a nice, nicer bolstering extension for when you're driving more aggressively. Uh, the glove compartment you can see is a bin style. It's damped, but not lined with felt. It's pretty big size. There is a uh, more frameless sty style rearview mirror, although I'm surprised you can see it's a manual style. It's not an auto, auto dimming. That is a dealer accessory. There's some LED lighting, map lighting, and then you can see big panoramic sunroof with a power retractable shade. Helps to block in the light or let in a lot of light if you'd like. So overall, the cabin, it feels roomy. It feels spacious. It's full of most of the tech that buyers want, except for wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and perhaps a heads-up display. Kia will want you to go to a more expensive car and they are I, I was told by Kia that they are working on wireless CarPlay it's something that the customers have been asking for and they're saying that it's something that they are looking into but we don't know when it'll be coming and we don't know if it'll be something that you can get as a software update or if it's something that you'll have to basically buy by moving on to the next model year so hopping into the back seat of the new Sportage this is where a lot of American families are going to find a lot to like back here because of that increased size you have significantly more space kia says you get 41.3 inches of legroom which is actually the same as what you get in the front seats and as you can see at five foot seven i'm back here and there's just a ton of space there's a ton of visibility uh the floor here you can see there's a ton of foot space right here but it's not completely flat i was kind of expecting a flat floor you do have other features like rear seat air vents a little bit of storage here you have two USB-C charging ports you have two storage pockets and then the materials back here you can see has similar materials as the front although this material here is a hard scratchy plastic so it's kind of a downgrade for the front but that's kind of expected for this segmented vehicle more piano black the, the red leather also looks good here 
And then when I fold this down, you can see there's an armrest with two cup holders. I love the fact that the rear seats also offer a recline function and it reclines pretty far back. So if you're trying to fit you know, a car seat back here or your taller friends, um, you certainly have the space. I also love the panel roof, how it lets in a lot of light. So if you're looking for a big back seat, the Sportage should definitely be at the top of your list. All right, so we are back in Palm Springs, California. I feel like I'm here practically every month. And as you guys can see, I'm joined by the lovely Tommy from TFL. Uh, and we're in the Sportage Hybrid. That's with, right. With this really nice red leather interior. And you actually haven't had a chance to drive the this powertrain yet, have you? I have not, okay. but this has a turbocharger and a hybrid system. Yes, yeah, so in theory, it should be pretty quick. Although Kia didn't tell us a zero to 60 time for this car, but you know what? I have my equipment and we're going to see what this car can do. So I'm going to switch the drive mode over into sports uh, and let's see here. And we'll just floor it and see what we can get. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> it's kind of odd being in a hybrid with like a conventional stepped automatic transmission. Yeah. And that time is not wonderful. 9.52 seconds. So maybe we'll retest it later on, but it definitely felt slow. Like, cause you like the Toyota hybrids are, are much quicker. Like you just spent a lot of time in the RAV4 Prime, mm -hmm. uh, which is technically more powerful than this. We need to drive the plug-in hybrid, but like, I'm sure you remember how fast that car was. Yes, like, it, it went was, like stink. Yes. yes. So the stepped automatic in theory, I think Kia probably does it to appeal more to the traditional driver who wants to feel the gear changes. But I think a CVT is probably better for efficiency. Do you really? I think so. I mean, this car is rated at 38, 38, which the RAV is like 40, 39 or something like that. Okay. Um, so it's not that much more, but I will say that like in my RAV4 Prime, I used to average like 38 mpg all the time in that car but don't you think when you come out to like the mountains of palm springs here right we got a beautiful road isn't it nice having that like direct feeling that an automatic gives you um it has that more traditional feeling but this transmission also shifts very slowly and i think it's down also two gears versus what it needs, needs to have. yeah because the standard one is an eight speed right yes. the standard gasoline model this mm -hmm. was a six yeah so i mean as a daily driver, it's going to be perfectly fine, but um, this Sportage is, I wouldn't say it's one of the sportier offerings either. Like, so we're now going up this mountain road, which we've been on this road many times. We were just here for the C40 recharge drive program. Uh, and the one that we're driving here is the SX Prestige Hybrid. Now, Kia does not offer the X-Pro off-roady in the hybrid bitch, in the hybrid model. Do you think they should, Tommy? Because I kind of think that... I think it'd be kind of cool. It would be cool, especially driving like electrified if you're off-roading. I think it's something that the manufacturers start to go to. But going around this corner here, yes, it, it's a compact SUV and it feels perfectly competent. This is riding on the new N3 platform, which is the same one as the Tucson. Um, Tommy hasn't had a chance to drive it yet, but we're going to switch later on. He's going to get behind the wheel. But... Well, the one thing I will tell you from the passenger seat is that it feels really big. Yes. You know, like the length, uh, it's, I think they said it's seven inches longer than the previous generation. Yes. This is just a physically large <laughs> vehicle. And do you feel that when you're driving it? Um, I do. So like the weight of this car is like 3,900 pounds. It's gone up, I think by 300 pounds. And you're right. The, the seven inch length increase definitely is felt. But what I feel also is how much wider this car is. It, Interesting. Uh, it definitely feels like it has a wider, a bigger footprint. Um, but it also gives you more space because that was kind of the problem with the old Sportage is it didn't have as much interior room. Yeah. Like it was it was kind of like a tweener sized SUV because all the other compacts were bigger than it. Now this one is the biggest in the segment because the Seltos is in the lineup so Kia was able to move it. But it is a nice driving car. I mean, I don't have, I don't come into this kind of class and have expectations of it being, you know, driving like a Porsche Macan, obviously. And I will say in sport mode, like it's doing a really good job of keeping you right around 3000 RPM. So you're kind of right on like that, that edge of the, the turbo being on boil. And then it's got a little bit of a downshift when you plant it. I mean, the cool thing about the hybrid system is in theory, right? You got that 44 kilowatt motor, which is kind of filling in the gaps mm -hmm. of the, uh, the, the gasoline drivetrain. Um, I wouldn't, from the right seat, I wouldn't describe this as particularly a dynamic experience, <laughs> but like for a road tripper, this would be awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, the steering is perfectly nicely weighted. It just doesn't really tell me what the front tires are doing. The suspension does feel soft. In fact, I'm sitting here like I'm tr I'm kind of pushing the car and there's a guy in a Subaru Outback behind us. It's literally on my tail a couple of times. So I'm like, maybe I'm not going fast enough, but <laughs> <laughs> that guy is really committed. He really is like <laughs> on my tail. So like I've been trying to get away from him because that's kind of how I judge a car's handling. If I can get away from like a normal car, like something like that. Um, but overall, like the visibility is good. I can see out of it really well. Um, the seats are also pretty comfortable. Yes. It's also 
relatively quiet in here. The engine isn't as noisy as uh, the Toyota hybrid system, I'd say. I completely agree. Yeah, yeah. The, I do like that stepped automatic gives you a little bit less engine noise. It just doesn't feel quite as powerful. It doesn't feel quite as seamless now, to me driving it. I mean, it's it's kind of like, I don't know. I, I'm really curious to see what the plug-in hybrid sportage is, is like, right? Because that one's going to have a lot more power. Um, right? It's got more power. It has power. 261 horsepower versus 227. Which so is a pretty big jump, But right? the torque is the same. I was confused mm, that's by That's interesting. It. Okay. Like, like, you'd think that that car would have over 300 foot-pounds of torque, and right. it doesn't. Um, it basically gets the extra power from the larger battery pack. Because remember, this car has like a little teeny-weeny 1.49 liter, or 1.49 kilowatt-hour battery pack. Yeah. It's, it's super, a hybrid. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just a regular, yeah, it's a full stuff. hybrid, but it's not going to take you on electric power alone. Um, that's something that you obviously need to wait for the plug-in hybrid for. But we haven't driven the gas-only version of this car. I, I, When I drove the gas-only version of the Tucson, I was actually pretty disappointed with that powertrain. Mm. I, I found it to be underpowered. Like, you guys have a Santa Cruz in your long-term fleet. Yeah, like, but, but we've got the, the turbo. turbo. Yeah. The turbo definitely makes a huge difference in that car. I haven't driven the, the base engine Santa Cruz, but if it's anything like the one in the Tucson, I kind of find it to be a little a little underpowered. Now, I think like the, the big thing that Kia has done a really good job with in the new Sportage is design, and there's also a lot of technology in here. Right? Yeah, I, I love the way this dashboard looks. Like, yes. This is very Mercedes. And this one is the uh, SX Prestige, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got the big curved screen. Do you like it? Do you like I the do. curve? Yeah, I like the curved screen because it, it just looks really high tech. And then you also have things like the 360 camera. You have the blind view camera. So if I signal right or left, it shows you exactly what's in your blind spot, which you, I believe you only get on the Prestige models. It's like an extra two grand to get this model. But this one that we're driving is like just under $40,000. Yeah. So it's it's gotten pretty expensive. Uh, but I would argue that it does give you the tech that you need. It gives you the space that you need. And it should, in theory, give you the efficiency. I, I'll have to retest this car in terms of fuel economy when I get it for a full week, because right now it's only averaging like 23 miles to the gallon. <laughs> well, you're driving up a hill. Right, we're driving up a hill. 4,000 RPM. Earlier, earlier, though, I was getting, it, says, it said we were getting like 33. So that's not too bad. Okay. And this is a vehicle that's hybrid with paddle shifters. Yes, it does have paddle shifters. And if I pull the paddle here, it, it kind of responds okay and it automatically upshifts for me which I don't like uh, the engine does get a little gritty did you I, I heard a little bit of vibration when it was like above 4,000 yep. rpm in the higher rpm yeah range. which I mean I guess most people who drive this are probably not going to push it that hard because the electric motor in theory should kind of carry you where you don't need to like right now this has enough power like it has enough torque to kind of get up this hill where I can just stab the throttle and it feels it feels good there so zero to 60 times aren't everything obviously the nine and a half I'm gonna say that it's not accurate um Perhaps maybe I'll retest it. I'd say this car will probably be in the mid seven second range. I think that's what I got for a Tucson hybrid, which is fine. That nine and a half number is what I think the gas engine will do. Right, gas only engine. And it keep, I mean, there are two of us and. Uh, yes, Tommy, you, know, you add so much weight. Well, <laughs> yeah, 109 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> but, like, the road condition, right, was not ideal. Right. And, um, yeah, it would be worth looking at that again. I do like this. I think this is really cool. It's got both a gas gauge and a hybrid battery gauge. Okay. I and, didn't even notice that. Do you see that? I do see that now. Yeah, you can see that the, the battery pack is at the three-quarter mark, right. basically. And that's not, I mean, it's not incredibly useful, no. but it is a cool <laughs> thing to kind of look at, see what the, the hybrid No, and I think you can doing. also change the um, display over here, this one, and you can actually put, like, there we go, you can put it to see where it's where it shows what power source is coming out from the engine or from the battery pack. So right now, obviously, it's all engine, but mm -hmm. the graphics in this car is amazing. Like, Toyota really needs to step it up in the RAV4. Same thing with Honda, although we've got a new CRV coming. Uh, this interior, I much prefer it over the Tucson. I just, I like this kind of more modern, high-tech look uh, versus the Tucson, which technically has smaller screens than this car now because it has two 10-inch displays. Yep. Um, but, I mean, in terms of the space, in terms of the tech, the design on the outside, I'm still kind of getting used to. I almost kind of wish that Kia had made this car look like a shrunken version of a Telluride. Okay. Or, or like an enlarged version of a Seltos. This okay. car has this really kind of almost alien design language to the front and to the rear, which I'm having trouble getting used to, but maybe I will later. And, and also this matte gray finished paint 
Tommy and I both agreed it's kind of pointless on a car like this. Well, it's just like, hmm, I don't know. It, it, this is like a, a color that I would expect to see on, you know, like a, a really high-end Mercedes mm -hmm. or like a Rolls Royce or something really premium. And I understand that they're trying to bring that kind of vibe down to a more attainable um, uh, purchaser. But this is a vehicle that's going to be used to pick up kids at school and, you know, do the, the, the runs for errands. And it, it feels like that this color is going to be detrimental to the long-term um, kind of... I don't know, condition of the car, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, this seems like it might be hard to maintain over many, many door dings. Yes. I you know what I mean? Agree with that. But anyways, we're going to keep driving this uh, on this curvy road, but we're actually going to go to an off-road course later in the X-Pro model, and uh, we're going to see just how off-road capable this car is later on in the video. Let's do it. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and retest the 0-60 to 60 because 9.5 was definitely too slow. This time Tommy is driving, and let's see what he can get. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right, 60 mile an hour road. Let's get it up to speed. There's second gear. Come on, buddy. 50 miles an hour and 60 there. 8.1. <laughs> um, I think your antenna just flew off. Uh, it's a fine. It's still there. <laughs> 8.1 is still not great, but it's better than 9.5. A, a lot better. <laughs> All right, so now we are taking this Sportage off-roading, and I'm letting Tommy drive because uh, we're going around this Baja corner, and Tommy has done it right. He's put it in sport mode. He's turned off the traction control. Sorry, did you say Baja corner in a Sportage, you, Sophia? Yeah, well, look at this. The guy in front of us is doing it, and they told us to wait until after the dust settles, but Tommy, I expect you to do a better drift than oh, that. Oh, we can do better than that. <laughs> traction control off, sport mode on, <laughs> manual mode engaged. Are you ready? Yes. Brake torque it. Here we go, Sophia. Bounces puppy off the rev limiter. <laughs> Pitch it in. Scandinavian flick. Oh, wow. Okay, I can come feel on. the back stepping out a little out. bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a Raptor, but it was a lot of fun. No, it's, I mean, the all-wheel drive system in this is very good. Uh, and we didn't scrape. We have 8.3 inches of ground clearance. We actually fell down a hill earlier. Um, but yeah, this is... <laughs> 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 oh, well, we drove it down the hill yes. earlier. But yeah, this is surprisingly good. It's got a good all-wheel drive system, but it uh, definitely could use a little more like upgrades like skid plates and maybe even like a locking center diff or something And like a supercharger. <laughs> yes, this yes. should be offered as a hybrid. So as Kia's oldest nameplate here in America, an all-new Sportage is obviously a big deal. And since this car has been out, it has grown to become the company's number one seller. It used to be that the Forte and the Optima slash K5 was the company's best seller. But of course, with everybody wanting to buy an SUV, that has quickly been taken over by the new Sportage. And I can see exactly why a lot of Americans are choosing this vehicle. In fact, Kia already says that the gas-powered version went on sale last month. It already has been outselling at dealerships. It's become their number one seller. Uh, however, the hybrid version, if you guys want that, the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid won't be coming until the end of Q2. So after spending the day driving mostly the hybrid model, this is what I suspect a lot of consumers are going to go with because of that increase in the fuel efficiency, because of that increase in the power. This essentially has all the same characteristics that I love about the Hyundai Tucson, because remember, they share the same platform. We have a ton of space on the inside. We have a ton of tech on the outside. We have a ton of style on the outside, which the style thing is kind of a subjective thing. I actually personally think that the Tucson looks better in my eyes, but I can't discredit the Sportage because it does also stand out in a good way. However, I will credit them for the interior because I think Kia did a better job with the interior with that huge curved panoramic display of screens facing the driver, the comfortable seats, the red interior, the different color options, and the fact that you can also get for like an off-road capable model like the X-Pro. Although I kind of wish that Kia would offer the X-Pro on the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid model. You can get the X-Line trim on the plug-in hybrid, but again, that model is not out yet and we don't know the final pricing of that vehicle yet. Well, speaking of which, with the pricing, this car starts the gas-only version at $25,995. That's before destination. Add $2,000 if you guys want all-wheel drive. Uh, it basically goes up in $2,000 increments to the EX, to the SX. This one here, the hybrid, starts at around $27,000. So it's about $2,000, no, I'm sorry, it's about $1,300 more versus the gas-only version. That's really not that much more. And it also is about $2,500 cheaper versus the Tucson hybrid. However, keep in mind, this car is cheaper because Kia offers a front-wheel drive version of the hybrid, which when you add all-wheel drive on the hybrid, it's around 29 grand. So the difference is about $700. Now this one here being the SX Prestige, it basically comes fully loaded. Uh, with features like the blind spot cameras, the 360 camera, the Harman Kardon stereo, the upgraded leather seats, the upgraded headlights. This one here, the only option it has are the uh, floor mats and of course the $600 charge for the matte paint. I would skip this paint because I think it's just too much maintenance, especially for a vehicle like this. 
Um, all in, this one's just over $38,000. Now, $38,000 is definitely expensive for a Sportage, but it's right around the same price level as the RAV4 Hybrid, a little bit more versus a CRV Hybrid, and also the same price as something like a Mazda CX-5 or a CX-50. So Kia has priced it really well, and even fully loaded versions of like the X-Pro model is gonna be around uh, $39,000. We don't have pricing yet for the plug-in hybrid, but its sister car, the, Santa, or the Tucson plug-in hybrid is like around $35,000. So I expect this car to be right around that same range. So in all honesty, it's a really good option. If you guys like the styling, you want more space, you like the tech inside this vehicle, it should definitely be at the very top of your list. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2023 Kia Sportage Hybrid. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.